God, we just thank you this morning just for this privilege and opportunity to come and study the word of God. We thank you, Father God, for your people, that they are good ground, about to receive a good word. Yes. We declare, Father God, that we'll not only be hearers, but we will be doers of the word that we hear. Yes. And even as we put the word of God into practice, we declare that our lives shall never be the same again. Yes. In Jesus' name, we thank you and we give you glory. Yes. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So we have been sharing with you on uh, El Shaddai lives in us. All right. All right. So this is probably like part five somewhere along that line on the loose camp. And uh, so let me let me share with you again what El Shaddai means. Uh, the word El Shaddai means the God who mightily nourishes, satisfies, protects, mm. and supplies for his people. Mm -hmm. El Shaddai Amen. is our all sufficient sustainer. Praise the Lord. Thank you. You know, and, and the good thing about that, under, under Christ, he's not El Shaddai, but he's daddy. Amen. Come on, amen. amen. We, we have, amen. In the Old Testament, El Shaddai would, was like on the outside uh, working on their behalf. But with mm -hmm. us, as born-again believers, whose faith is in the Lord Jesus Christ, he's really working on the inside out. All right. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's amen. good news to know that the all-sufficient one is always with you. Amen. No matter where you go. I don't care what the circumstances of life look, look, look like around you. I don't care how it appears to the world. You've got to know that you have a good shepherd mm -hmm. who will always take care of you, yes. who will always provide for yes. you, mm -hmm. that will keep you in a place that mm -hmm. you don't have to live in lack if you learn to trust him and right. operate according to his system. Amen. 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 All right, I want you to turn with me this morning to, uh, <coughs> let's see where we'll start. Let's say John chapter, John chapter 10. And so we're going to look at today uh, Jesus, the Good Shepherd. Because really the Bible says that God has highly exalted Jesus. Yes. Amen. And gave him a name above every name. That means it's above El Shaddai. Amen. 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 A name that's above every name. Uh, that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God, Amen. the Father. Amen. That's what he's done for us, that he has adopted us by his spirit. When we confess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, we were adopted into the family of God, God made a joint heir with Jesus. Mm. That means joint means equal. So whatever Jesus possesses, we possess because the Bible says that uh, we live mm. in him. Amen. And I can't live yes. with somebody and not get all that they got too. All right. All right. All right. Amen. And Amen. so because we are living in him. Now, let me say this, that as we, when we talk about living in him, it's not just saying I'm saved, but it's also operating according to his system, his, his means of operation. Amen. If he tells us to love the unlovely, then that's what we have to do mm -hmm. so that we can operate according to his system. As we stay in his system, we will receive the supply for our life that we need. Amen. All right. Amen. All right. So in John chapter 10, verse 7, uh, it says, Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. Yes. Now, so the first thing we have to realize is that we are sheep. Amen. And sheep are dumb. Oh, my God. Come on, man. <laughs> and nobody likes to think of themselves as, as being dumb. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's the truth. Because pride kicks in. I'm not dumb. I'm educated. You can educate and still be dumb. I mean, you can't. I mean, you know. And yet you can be uneducated and be smart. All right. So, so he says, so, that, so this, he said, I am the door. Now, now, as a sheep, I have to understand this ideal of a door. When shepherds took care of their sheep and to protect them, they led them into a door that led to like a, like a pen that held all the sheep together. And the ship, the shepherds will stay at the door to guard the sheep. He is the door. Which means if, if the enemy really want to get to you, one or two things have to happen. Either one, he has to go to Jesus, which he's not going to do that because he's already been defeated. Yeah. Or two, you decide to jump out of the pen and go do your own thing. Mm -hmm. That's why the Bible says Satan goes about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Why? Because everybody's not outside the pen. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. But the good shepherd is there to take care of you. To what did we read uh, last week? Uh, to lead you beside what still waters and to lead you to green pastures. All right. Meaning you can eat well and you can rest because sheep are very jumpy. Mm. The least little thing get them all in uproar. Mm. Uh, Amen. Amen. But a good shepherd leaves them beside what still water so they can drink peacefully. Amen. Amen. 
Come on, Jesus said, come to me, all you that are weary and heavy laden, and I will I give you rest. rest. Say that. You know, one of the things that people are dealing with today more than anything else I find is that they're dealing with anxiety. Mm -hmm. People are worried. And I'm, I don't mean just the world. We understand why the world is worried because they don't have Christ. Mm -hmm. Come on, man. But believers are worried. They're, they're panicking. They're, they're in an uproar. They're, they're jumping. They're like sheep. They're real sheepish. They're, sheepish. they're kind of, you know, don't know what to do with themselves because they're fearful. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are fearful because they're uncertain of their future. Come on, amen. amen. A lot of people are uncertain. I don't know. I, don't know what, I, I know what Jeremiah 29 11 says. He says, I know the thoughts I think towards you, says, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not evil, and to give you an expected end, praise the Lord. Amen. Come on, amen. amen. I know his thoughts towards me are good, so I'm going to maintain a connection with my shepherd, mm -hmm. and as I maintain that connection, he's going to lead me to green pastures and still right, walk. Now. Amen. But don't start looking at other sheep. Because other sheep may not have the shepherd you have. Mm -hmm. Come on, amen. We amen. start looking at those sheep over there. Well, those sheep are worried. Just because those sheep are worried, hey, I got a good shepherd. I don't got to worry about it. Mm -hmm. All right, now. Look, but look, he said in verse 8, all, 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 that, all that ever came before me are thieves and robbers. Mm -hmm. But the sheep did not hear them. Mm -hmm. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and he shall go in and out and find pasture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, the word pasture there simply means food, mm -hmm. a supply. Glory. But, but notice that it, it's always coming through the door. Mm -hmm. But notice what he said. You can go in and out and find pa In other words, you don't have, there may be trouble around you, but trouble don't have to come knocking at your door. Come on. Say that. Come on. It may knock at your door, but open the door and let it in. Praise right. God. Because why? Because if you stick with your shepherd, mm -hmm. he will allow you to go in and out. But when you go in and out, you're going in and out with him. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. He's the all-sufficient one. You don't have to be fearful about yes. wood because a good shepherd will know, knows how to protect you. Mm -hmm. A hireling will leave you in trouble. Come on. Come on. But the good shepherd will give his life for his sheep. Yes. Yes, he will. yes, he will. Look what verse 10 says. The thief comes not but to steal and to kill and destroy. Mm -hmm. And I am come that they might have life and that they may have it more abundant. They will life that overflows. Oh, I like that. Come on, amen. amen. He says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Mm -hmm. But he that is a hireling and not, a, and not the shepherd, whose who own the sheep are not, see the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and flee. Mm -hmm. Come on, amen. Amen. And the wolf catches them and scatters the sheep. The hireling fleeth because he is a hireling and mm -hmm. careth not for the sheep. All right. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. Hallelujah. Amen. See, when, you, when, you, when you're a sheep to the Lord, don't mind being a sheep. Amen. Ain't nothing wrong with being a sheep. I mean, what would your life be like every day if you got up and all you had to do was follow some dude and he led you to still waters, led you to green pastures? Come on, amen. amen. You need a goat. He didn't let you to what a goat was. You didn't trip about it. Come on, when the bill showed up, you didn't have to worry about looking at the bill. All you need is hand it to your shepherd. Mm -hmm. Hand it to the one you're following. That's how he really wants us to live our lives. Awesome. He really wants us at peace. Mm -hmm. See, anxiety, here's what the Lord showed me. He said, anxiety in the life of, of a believer comes because that believer has lost sight of what I have promised or, or who I am. Say that. Say that. And whenever you lose sight of who he is, then you take on the responsibility of solely taking care of you. Mm -hmm. And that's where anxiety comes in. Because why? Because you don't know what tomorrow will bring. Say that. You don't know what's coming down the pike. Say that. You don't know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, you can be going good in your finances, but one bad accident can mess all that up. Mm -hmm. Come on. So if you're trusting in that, then you're in trouble. Because mm -hmm. the Bible says to trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not to your own understanding. Mm -hmm. But in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will what? Direct your path. Yes. In other words, I'm not smart enough to run my own life. <laughs> I'm a sheep. Mm -hmm. I'm dumb. <laughs> I will walk out in water and drown myself because I don't have enough sense to know that when my, my wool get wet, I'm going to drown. Mm -hmm. But if I learn to hear the voice of my shepherd yes. and right. just do what he does and follow him, Everything will be taken care of. Why? Because he will care for his sheep. Mm. Mm. Man. All right. That's El Shaddai. Mm. 
say. And one of the things the Lord began to show me about even like Matthew chapter 6, how he, he tells you don't worry about tomorrow for the for sufficient is the evil thereof, that there's enough trouble in the day, then worry about tomorrow. And he talks about how if he took care of the, the, the spouse of there, he'll take care of us. Yes. And, and, and here's the Lord saying, say they'll, they'll, they'll never understand that if they don't understand me. If they don't understand who I am in their life, they'll, ne they'll never get it. Yes. Because in the back of your mind, you always got that pl that thing playing saying, you're supposed to be responsible of you. Mm -hmm. You're going to take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. If you can't take care of yourself, what's wrong with you? You couldn't take care of yourself before Jesus, so why do you think you can do it now? Do it now. Mm -hmm. No, you needed Jesus because there were some things in your life that we had all messed up. Yes. Amen. Amen. And we needed him to show up and help us and guide us. And so we start walking by faith. Mm. You know what faith is? It began with the will of God. It's known. The will of God is the word of God. Yes. So when we began to walk with Jesus, he began to instruct us. Mm -hmm. Now you need to do this. Now you need to do that. You need to go over there. All I right. want you to join this church. I don't know about right. that. I didn't ask you all that. I just need you to take me at my all word. Right. Yeah. Because you've been pick, pick, picking churches your whole life and it didn't work for you. Mm. Amen. Come on. That's not the person for you. But Lord, they so you don't care how cute they are to you. I know them better than you did. Mm, and that's on. not the person I got for you. Say that. But you got to trust him. That he knows what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Alright. Oh, Look at John chapter 14. John chapter 14 verse 21. See, Jesus gave us a better covenant than the Old Testament. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. You look at me so sad. I love this look. You just look so stupid. <laughs> okay. That's right. Keep watching. <laughs> but John chapter 14, verse 21 says this. He that has my commandments and keepeth them, he is, he, it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Mm. Mm. Now here's, 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 here's what I, I kind of learned very early in my walk with God. That, that if, if I really wanted to know him, honestly, I had to love him. You don't get to know nobody you don't love. Mm. Mm. Amen. Say that. And I also had to know that he loved me. No, Lord. And it's, it's amazing that when you find that mutual love, <laughs> there are things you will begin to show that individual because of the love between you. Uh -huh. they, they, will be, they will be allowed to see sides of you that nobody else sees. Wow. Say that. There are things about God, listen, that he wants to reveal to you about himself, mm. Mm. that you can't rely on what other folks said about it, because they don't know it All like right. you did. All right. You know, some folks will tell you God will burn down your house. Mm -hmm. Some folks will tell you God will break your leg. Mm -hmm. Some, some folks tell you God sent you trouble. God didn't send you trouble. Your sin brought you trouble. Mm -hmm. Come on. Come on. He said, look what the, what the word says. He, the Lord says, I know the thoughts I think towards you, thoughts of peace. What? Not even. Not even. I ain't never had trouble come up and just call me to be at peace. Mm -hmm. The thief comes not, but what? To steal, mm -hmm. to kill, and to destroy. But I've come that you might have life and life more abundantly. Why would Jesus say to, say to, to the people, come unto me all you that are weary and heavy laden and I will give you rest. Mm -hmm. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me for my yoke is easy my and my burden is what? Life. Why would he say all that just so you see trouble in my way? Oh, hold up, hold up, hold up. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> Later awake at night, but that's all right. No, it ain't all right. He promised me sweet sleep. Mm. Amen. Mm. But see what happened? You don't know your shepherd. Mm. Mm. Don't ever try to know Jesus through other people. Come on, man. Because other people have views of him that's not true. Say that. You can, that's why I, I always encourage you to have a personal relationship with God for yourself so you can hear his voice in your life so that in everyday life mm. you can hear him so that you don't just believe what everybody else is saying around you. Mm. When, the, when the company looks like it's going under and everybody is panicking and freaking out and talking about they don't know what to do, mm. well, hold up, you got to get with your shepherd. Because mm. mm. he got you. Mm. Amen. Uh -oh. <laughs> Amen. He wants us, listen, he wants us at peace. Yes, he does. Uh, look at, uh, look at uh, verse 22 of John 14. Now Judah said unto him, not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that you will, you will manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? In other words, how are we going to see you but the world won't? Mm. Jesus answered and said unto him, if a man love me, he will keep my words. Mm. That ain't all. I, I don't know how you can misinterpret that. If you love me, you'll do what I say. Mm. All right. And my father will love him. 
and we will come unto him and make our bowl with him. He that loveth me not keepeth not my saying. That's not hard to, say, to understand. If you don't obey God, it's because you don't love him. And it's hard to love somebody you don't know. Isn't that true? You ever thought you, you, you ever got confused between love and infatuation? Come on, man. <laughs> And you thought you was all in love until they started showing you who they really were. Mm -hmm. That infatuation died real fast, didn't it? <laughs> Would you perceive love? Oh, it was gone by the end of the week. Sometimes by the end of the day. Mm -hmm. because, you, because you see, love reveals to you who he is. But not only does love reveal to him, reveals who he is, who I am, or to him. What, what did I say? How did I say that? Love reveals who he is mm -hmm. to us. But love also allows us to reveal who he, who we are to him. That's right. I was in an old filthy rag. Hold up, you ain't seen yourself through love. You got to see you the way he sees you. Yeah. Oh, Amen. You are the favorite of the Lord. Amen. You are blessed coming in and blessed going out. But my check, don't let, put, look at your checkbook and look Come at your on. shepherd. Come on. Come on. Because in him you live and move and have your being. Yeah. And in him you are complete. That word complete means nothing lacking, nothing broken. Yeah, but I don't see it in the natural. That's why you need to learn how to live, live out of the spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen. And Amen. not the natural. Am I saying you deny the natural? No, but you deny the natural the right to remain in your life if it doesn't line up with the word. All right. All right. How many know, how many know facts can change? Amen. Right now, the fact is everybody said, if I said stand up, guess what? That fact changed that quickly. Mm -hmm. Just as quickly, the facts in your life can change just like that from one word from the Lord that you listen to and you obey it. It can change everything. Mm -hmm. One day of favor from God can change your whole life. Come on, man. Come on. Look at verse 25. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. Verse 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you what? All things, and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Mm. Now, when he, well, let, me, let me clarify this something, because I, I always, people always use 26 to be rebellious. <laughs> uh, he said he shall teach you all things. In other words, what he's saying is, when he sends the Spirit of God, and the Spirit of God is leading you, and you're sitting, let's say you're sitting in a church and you're hearing the word of God. Uh, the spirit of God, through that person who's teaching you the word, is giving you insight and revelation. Mm -hmm. Come on, amen. amen. Have, you ever heard, have you ever been in church and you're hearing the word of God as the person says something and it hits something in your spirit and even as it hit your spirit, you begin to get other insight and revelation about things in your life? Mm -hmm. What is that? That's the spirit of God. Amen. Come on, amen. The Bible says, how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach? Let's be sent. Because people use that to say, I don't even know, I didn't serve Jesus. No, you don't. You just lying to yourself. You don't. You got a job? Yeah. You go to work? What time do you got to be at work? At 8? Oh, you there at 8? Yeah. Why? Mm -hmm. Why don't you do what you want to? Mm -hmm. Because you know if you don't, you get fired. Mm -hmm. So you know, people don't, people just use that when it comes to, okay, anything. Praise the Lord. Move on. Verse 27. He said, he said, he said, peace I leave with you. Now this is, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Look at that. Not as the world give it, right. give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. Okay. Neither let it be afraid. Mm. Now, now, how, now like how can I do that? <laughs> when I understand who my shepherd is. Mm. Because when, when you are the source of your life mm. and your, your supply looks short, fear kicks in. So then you began to come up with other ways by which to try to provide for yourself. And many times it violates the word in some way. But, but let me say, now this, this is trouble. Trouble affecting your life is a choice. Mm. That's right. Let not your heart be troubled. In other words, that word let means, is, it means I'm yielding to it. He said don't yield your heart to trouble. Does it mean trouble won't come? No. But trouble don't have to come in the house. All right. Trouble's going to show up. The, it, it rains on the just, the, the just and the unjust alike. Mm -hmm. All they that live godly will suffer persecution. But just because you suffer persecution, don't mean you have to be sad. Come on. Paul and Silas in the jail. Men have been beat, 
Come on, amen. Thrown into the inner parts of the prison, chained up at midnight, the darkest time of night there is. Then what did they do? They began to pray and sing praises unto God. Why? Because they didn't let the trouble trouble them. They troubled their trouble. And when they troubled their trouble, then their trouble had to leave. And the chains came off and all the doors flew open and everybody got free. Because two, two crazy dudes decided to praise God at the, at the most unopportune time. Come on, man. And we got to learn to praise God when it's not convenient. Amen. We gotta learn to praise God when we don't feel it. Praise God. Come on, we gotta right. raise our hands and say you're good to me because you're good. Yes. Not because of what I feel and not because of what I see, because trouble can be all around me. But I know my, my shepherd got me, praise yes. God. And he's gonna take care of me. Glory. Amen. It's all right. Amen. It's all right. Listen, he said, so don't let your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Mm. Amen. See, fear. A lot of, a lot of people. Walk around fearful. A lot of Christians walk around very fearful about life. Mm -hmm. Cause here's why. Cause we don't know. Isn't that scary? <laughs> you don't know. I mean, that's the truth. You don't know. Yeah. I don't know what's gonna happen next week. I don't know. I don't know. But you do know. Mm -hmm. Cause the word told you <laughs> that when we obey God, goodness and mercy mm -hmm. follows us all the days of our lives. He says, with long life will I satisfy you and show you my satisfaction. Come on, satisfaction. Mm -hmm. And someone says, I can't get no satisfaction, then no God. Because <laughs> he said he will satisfy you. Mm -hmm. But you, you do know what your future holds. Because Jeremiah 29 tells you that he, that he said, I know the thoughts I think towards you, thoughts of peace and what? Not of evil. And to give you an expected end. Mm -hmm. That word expected means rope. It means he has tied you to a predetermined future for your life. The problem is, in that predetermined future, you got to make up your mind to stick with it. Amen. Amen. You can throw away your destiny. Mm. Mm. You think God intends for people to be, be addicted to crack? No, no, no. Addicted to drugs? No. They made a choice. And their choice took, took them off the path that God has for their life. Mm. Every human being that's born, God has a predetermined plan for their life. Every one of them. Every aborted baby had a predetermined plan. Amen. Well, that God's would know. But what happened with people? People decide to do what they want to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They make choices. Mm -hmm. that's, why, that's why God told Israel, I said before you, life and death, blessings and cursing. Mm -hmm. Choose life so that you and your seed might live. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He says choices before us. But, he all, but the thing about God, he always tells you the answer to the test. <laughs> I mean, if you fail an open book test, I'm going to pray for you. <laughs> How do you fail an open book test? Because God only gives open book tests. <laughs> I mean, if you fail an open book test, yeah, you really need some prayer, man. <laughs> all the answers right there. I ain't feel like turning the page. Really? So you'd rather fail than turn the page. <laughs> All right, listen to this. <laughs> um, look at Philippians 4.6. Oh, and really what I, I, I really just kind of sense God saying this to deal with anxiety. Because so many people have it. Uh -huh. Fear, worry, concern. You know, I... Uh, I was, I was sharing this at Bible study once, and I was talking about how that series, uh, Learning to Live in This Day, had just, it has blessed my life. Mm -hmm. Even though I taught it, but man, mm -hmm. it blessed me. Because it made me mindful that every day I get up, He got me. Amen. It made me realize that as I walk in His will, His provision is there. I don't have to worry about tomorrow, and you got to worry about next week. All I got to do, do right now is walk in the here and now and do what He tells Say me to that. do. Mm -hmm. And that's a wonderful, and I listen to me, for a long time that was very uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Probably why I had been teaching for a long time. But it started becoming a reality to me. When I started watching things around me, things going astray, things going left, and things going right, God just kept me straight. Mm -hmm. And it's like, man, this works out for my good. Mm -hmm. You know, and, uh, and God, y'all, God is just good. He's just faithful like that. Mm -hmm. But you know, and he, listen, he wants to show you how faithful he is. Mm -hmm. For so long mm -hmm. that he does it. But so many times we don't give him the opportunity to be faithful because we're too busy working our plan. <laughs> Say that. Say and what's, what we make hard sometimes, God said, would really be easy mm -hmm. 
if you just listen to me. Mm. Mm. Philippians 4 verse 6. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 says this. Be careful for nothing. Come on. Be careful, full of care for nothing. Now think about it. Nothing. Nothing. Well, if I don't care, I'm going to show people I love my children if I don't worry about them. By giving them to God. Mm -hmm. That's how you show God. That's how you show people you love them. I gave them to somebody that can be with them all the time because I can't be. Mm -hmm. And I trust the one I gave them to uh -huh. to watch over them while they're not in my presence. All right. All right. You know, I, I love my children. I pace the floor all night. I ain't pacing no floor. Man, I'm going to bed. <laughs> Say that, man. Now <laughs> hmm. think about it. what does pacing the floor go really do? Where are you at? Doesn't that violate Matthew chapter 6? <laughs> He said, can you, through you know, being anxious, can you add one cubit to your statue? Mm -hmm. No, you can't do nothing. They're going to still be out there doing what they do. All right. You might want well to believe God to get their attention when they ask that. But we worry, and we think that's love. Mm -hmm. The love of God is peaceful. Mm -hmm. you, just, you just don't understand. Yeah, I do. I got, you. I got a child. I absolutely understand. But I trust God for him. Come on, I plead the blood on me they go to school. Thank Amen. you, God. You got Amen. it. Covered it. Mm -hmm. You know, you hear about these shooting going on in school. Ain't bothering me, no. Mm -hmm. I got my boy covered. Come on. Mm -hmm. That's right. Come on. You know that shooting going on out of my son's school? Mm -hmm. I done pray. Mm -hmm. But see, people don't people people think you don't care. <coughs> and know the truth of the matter is, I don't care. Mm -hmm. It's not my job to care. Oh. My job is to believe God and have faith in him. The just shall live by faith, not by caring. Uh -huh. yes. All right. Come on, man. And people say, well, you just don't care. I don't know. You, you, you got that right. Because <laughs> care adds fear to your life. Maybe not the thing you worry about keeps you up. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You keep trying to figure out how to fix it because you don't think God's moving fast enough. Uh -oh. mm -hmm. I got time for all that. You got time you worry about my, my son. Mm -hmm. I have to believe God. Mm -hmm. If my faith works, then I can believe God. Amen. And he'll keep me in good. I will keep him in perfect peace mm -hmm. whose mind is stayed on me. Why? Because he trusts him. Yes, Lord. God never, you know, worry, worry can't put you in the grave a little quicker. Say that, man. Say it. But God didn't intend that for what? Well, he didn't intend it. He wants us to be sheep, and sheep trust their shepherd. Mm. And I trust him. I have to trust him. Mm. Come on, amen. I have to trust him in the now. I have to trust him for my tomorrow. I have to trust him for every dream that he gave me. I got to mm. trust him. Even when I look at the things he told me I would do, I look at him and go, in the natural, I'm not gonna do that. I have no idea. But then I just realized I don't. It don't I don't have to know because he knows. All right. He knows everything. One day of favor can change everything. Turn it around just like that. But don't we feel, in a sense, like we're being responsible people when we worry about stuff? <laughs> And yet it is the most irresponsible thing you can do. Because when you're, when you're like that, you're not inviting God on the scene. You're not inviting El Shaddai, the all-sufficient one, to come on the scene of your problems. Oh, Lord. But look, he said, be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known unto God. And who he says, here's when you know you let go of your request. And the peace of God, which passes oh. all understanding. Folks don't understand. Why are you happy? Your child just got locked up. Why are you happy? God got him. God good. You just lost your job. Why are you smiling? God got me. That's an opportunity for my father to show how much he loved me even more. They laying off everybody. What you going to do? Trust the Lord. Worry about ain't going to fix it. Say that. All it does is get your blood pressure all up, get y'all stressed out and tense, and then you start snapping at people because they don't know why you snapping at them when you all tense. Like, you know you get you get irritable with people when you when you upset. Yeah. Anybody? Mm -hmm. Can't your girl give you back one one dime too little and you go off? <laughs> then the right chain. Don't you know how to do your job? Then you got to, don't you know how to count? <laughs> get all upset at people. Why? Because you stressed out. Stress, listen, stress people, stress other people out. Come on. It's just like hurting people hurt people. Stress people, stress other folk out. Mm -hmm. And you got to shut them down. So hold up. 
God got me. He got you too if you let it. <laughs> you got to shut that stuff down. Take heed of what you hear. Don't let everybody speak in your ear everything that come down that pipe. Yeah. I don't, I, I'm at a point now, I, I, I care so little. I don't care if I offend you. Because I love you. Come on. Uh, I'm sorry, I, don't want, I can't talk about that. Amen. Come on. You know, oh, praise the Lord. Amen. All right. Amen. Listen to this. And the peace of God which passes all to understand shall keep your hearts and minds, how? Through Christ Jesus. Christ. Because in him we live and move and have our being. Yeah. So then I'm not trying to get a peace that comes out of the flesh or a peace that comes out of the emotions. Because yeah. that stuff is temporal. But the peace that comes out of my spirit can be in the midst of chaos, but yet on the inside there's something that says, I got a feeling everything's going to be all right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Says so there's something on the inside that says, it's going to be okay. <laughs> and I'm feeling your flesh will want to worry. You ever had your flesh in turmoil with you when you try to save people, your flesh like, we need to worry about it. We need to care. <laughs> you ever had your flesh do that? It fights mm -hmm. you. That's not you. That's just your flesh. You got right. to hold up flesh. Come on. Come on. Let me tell you about the, group, the good shepherd. <laughs> He got us. It's gonna be okay, flesh. Let's go, go, go pray. Let's go pray. Let's take your flesh and let's go pray and thank God. Get into the prayer of thanksgiving and give God glory and exalt Him and lift Him up and yeah. tell Him how good and how awesome He is. And you know, then maybe God shows Himself flexing for you and showing you what He can really do. Amen. So you got to talk to your flesh because your flesh is gonna go go contrary. It's gonna go the way of the world. Look at Hebrews ten thirty five. Hebrew 10, 35. See, that many people, including believers, are full of anxiety. Anxiety comes out of a spirit of fear. Anxiety comes because we are either unsure of the promises the Father had made, or we never knew them. It is important that we understand the provision of the Father and are fully persuaded of those promises for our lives. The Bible says all the promises of God in Christ Jesus are yes, and in him, amen. Uh -huh. amen. Yes means approval. Amen means completion. Amen. So God approved the promises, and he completed them. Amen. Well, why come I ain't seen them? Because every promise, and every promise is in seed form, and it's in your spirit. Mm -hmm. And if you don't give life to it, it'll never grow. Mm -hmm. You keep talking broke, broke is what you're going to get. Mm -hmm. You keep mm -hmm. talking sick, the sicker you go get. Yeah. All right, man. But see, all those, are, all those promises are in seed form on the inside of every believer. Why? Because the Spirit is there. And He's waiting to water what you plant. Now, what would I look like if I, if, if I went out and dug up some ground and went out there with a, with a water hose and I just going, Ooh, what you plant? I ain't planting anything. Just water in the ground. Mm -hmm. No, if, if I want to return, I got to plant some seed first. Amen. Because if I don't plant any seed, I'm going to get is weeds. Mm -hmm. And all I'm doing is watering. And see, all, all we do is water the weeds of our lives. Because mm. mm. we don't want to plant the seed of the seed of God's word into our heart. All right. Now. Look at Hebrews ten thirty five. You there? Amen. Look what it says. It says, "Cast not away therefore your confidence, which has great recompense of reward." Great. See, this is where we lose it. It's in the waiting process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Between the seed right. being a seed yeah. and the seed coming to full fruition. That's where we lose it at. Mm -hmm. Because in that process, we start convincing that other thing ain't growing. I don't think it's doing that. I've been putting water on the sunshine. Then you dig it up, see if it's still in the ground. That thing has to germinate. <laughs> it has, look, in other words, it has to die to itself to reproduce life. you got to die to yourself. We all have to die to ourselves so that we may live the life of Christ. Yeah, this is... Uh, he said, cast not therefore your confidence, cast not away therefore your confidence, which has great recompense of reward. For you have need of patience, that after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. So here's my question to you. If you're looking for a harvest, first find out what is his will for you in planting that harvest. All right. What is his will? It's, it's, like, it's like giving and you don't have no expectation. I just give, I ain't expecting that, I just give. Are you stupid? <laughs> Okay, wait. Are you foolish? <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't go to work on a good, good feeling. I go to work because I realize in two weeks they're going to make a deposit. <laughs> Isn't that true? 
I mean, that's not my motivation, but I know that's going to happen. Right, right. And when you give, God gave some promises to you. Give, yes. and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, yes. press down, shaking together, and run it over. Men go give right. back into your bosom. Yes. Oh, I, and, I, and I meet people. We, when, when God will put up on my heart to bless them, I just want to bless them and give them something. Oh, no, no, no. Are you... <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, I'm go, okay. You'll learn, you'll learn your lesson. You go home broke and go home hungry. You'll learn your lesson. <laughs> Next time somebody say, I want to give you something because the Lord put on my, you like, okay, praise the Lord. Bring it on, bring it on. Bring it on. Yes, hallelujah. <laughs> and, and, and don't, and don't, don't try to nitpick what comes into your life. Mm. If somebody bring you a boat, I don't want no boat. Mm -hmm. But you can cash the boat in for some money mm -hmm. that you do need. Amen. So don't nitpick Say what it. comes. Just receive it Say by it. faith. Come on. And then maybe God's trying to give it to you so that he can give it through you. Amen. Mm. Amen. Amen. But when we're so selfish-minded, we only think about us. And sometimes right. you got to understand that God's trying to bless you so you can bless somebody else. Then in turn, right. he can bless you for your obedience. All right. Right. So you got to look bigger than you. Mm -hmm. Come on, amen. All right. Mm. Look at verse 36. But well, you have need of patience that after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. So then the question, you got to know what the promise is. Verse 37. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Thank you, Lord. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Mm -hmm. So you can start out in faith and then lose your faith in the process mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and never see the end of what God promised you. you got to hold fast to the confession of your faith. Amen. You gotta, if if you got to hold fast to it, that means somebody trying to take it from you. Yeah. Come on, mm -hmm. amen. That means the enemies and people, and he'll use people to try to convince you mm -hmm. that the promises of God's word don't work for you. It'll work for everybody else, but it won't work for you. He'll Why? try to convince you to let it go, to give up, and when it gets hard, see this faith thing ain't working. See, that's all they talking about, faith, 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 faith. You don't need no faith. You need to get you some, uh, uh, go get your hustle on. <laughs> <laughs> go sell some CDs out of the back of your car. No? <laughs> get some illegal CDs in you know, you know, DVDs and stuff. And, you know, bro, they stand up together, bro. You, you, I got some movies. But I don't want your movies. <laughs> I can buy my own movies, praise the Lord. Praise Come on, amen. Trying to hustle. Yeah. God don't need, sheep don't hustle. Come on, man. Come on. <laughs> Say that. You don't see sheep out there. Come on, bro. I got a nice, a nice set of wool for you. Come on, come on. You can make me an offer. You don't see sheep doing that. Sheep go around going, bad, eating grass and drinking water. Bad, eating grass and drinking water. That's all they do. And follow their shepherd. Mm. See, hustling is when you try to make it on your own. Uh -oh. And let me tell you something. The devil will bless your hustling. Oh, he'll let your hustle work so you don't have to come trust in the Lord. Uh -oh. And then what he'll do is it, through your hustle, you'll get start getting prosperous or in this get that appearance of prospering and you'll be going up. Then when he waits you get to a point that he just slaps it all down. Because mm -hmm. you build it on the devil mm -hmm. and his system. And whatever you build on his system, he can't control. Mm -hmm. So don't be don't be impressed by other people doing their hustle and look like they're working. Come on. Mm -hmm. They go up fast, they go fall real hard to them. Don't be in, no, you find God's order for your life, and you do what God said. I don't care. And people talk. And let me tell you, people go talk about you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They go criticize. Wait, why are you giving church money to that church? That. You know you need that money, girl. Why are you giving that money to the mm. church? They got enough people. Then you shouldn't be doing that. Hold up. Cause my king says to do. Mm. Mm. He says he, he tells me in Malachi, bring you all the tithes in the stores and and, and and prove me and then see if I'm not open for you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. You won't have room enough to receive. Say that. Yeah, but they don't need it, but you need it. I mean, what if the farmer, what if the farmer said, Woo, I want a harvest. I ain't planting no seed this year, though. I ain't planting no seed, but I'm believing God for a harvest. Well, guess what he's going to get? A whole bunch of weeds. Because you don't plant nothing, you don't get nothing. All right. He says, verse 38 says this in Hebrews 10. He says, Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back unto per perdiction, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Now listen to this. The soul, listen, the soul 
is your, is your mind, not your spirit. Right. Your spirit is saved by your faith in Jesus Christ and that alone. Your soul is the way of thinking. Most people, most, even most believe, they're saved in their spirit because they confess Jesus as Lord, and their faith was in that. But their minds never change. Mm. Mm. The Bible tells us in Romans 12, 1, it says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Lord, which is your reasonable service. Verse 2, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Okay. So that you might prove what is that good and perfect and acceptable will of God. And the problem is not that when you got born again, you didn't get everything you needed when you were born again. The problem is your mind is hindering you from tapping into your spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm. If you don't change your way of thinking, mm -hmm. come on, now you won't change your life. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, so a man thinketh, mm -hmm. so is it. I don't care. I'm just, you can be as saved as all get out in your spirit. But in your soul, you can still think like a lost person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you can be very sincere that you receive Jesus. Amen. But you never learn how to change your thinking. Mm -hmm. And if you don't change your thinking, you ain't going to change your life. Mm -hmm. Listen to me. Your life will never go where your thoughts have not already been. That's right. Come on, that's good right there. Amen. Your life cannot go where your thoughts have not been. You're, in other words, if you're going to go anywhere first, you've got to go there in your thoughts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you want to go home when you leave here, guess what you got to guess how you got to get there first? Mm -hmm. In your thoughts. Say that. And then your life follow your thinking. Yes. Most people don't see the necessity of controlling their thought life because nobody sees it. Oh, but we can see the results of it. Mm. <laughs> oh, yes, we can. All right. Oh, Lord, man, I've been preaching a long time, haven't I? <laughs> <laughs> you didn't even realize it. I didn't even realize it, y'all. I really did. All right, let me yeah. do more verses of Scripture. I'm going to be done. We'll, we'll just turn it into part two next week. Uh, Colossians uh, chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. I'm going to look at verses 8 through 10. I think this is a good place to end. And so what we're talking about, El Shaddai lives in us. The all-sufficient one is living on the inside of you as a born-again believer. But you've got to connect to him. And to connect to him, you've got to connect to his system of operation, how he does things. Matthew says, first seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and that all these other things will be added to your life. And when he says the kingdom of God, he's talking about God's way of doing things. Seek God's way of doing things and not your way of doing things. Because how many of you know our way of doing things led us to Jesus because we messed it up so badly. <laughs> All right? So Colossians chapter 2, verse 8 says this. It says, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit mm -hmm. after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. For in him, or in Christ, dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. All right. And you are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. Now, if you're complete, and, and, and this is this, you're complete in the one who is the head of all principality and power, that means all principality and power are beneath you too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Come on, hey, come think about that for a minute. Mm. Satan's already defeated in your life. All right, man. Amen. He's just trying to convince you that you're not. Mm. The Bible says you are more than conquerors through Christ who loved you and gave himself for you. But so many believers don't live like they're conquerors. They live like beggars. Come on, Lord, if you don't help, please, Lord, please, Lord, help me. God said, I already did it. I just need you to believe what I did. Come on, it, 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 no, it's, it's, like, it's kind of like, it's kind of like you have a need. Let's, let's just say you have a need in your life, and I, say, and, I, and I tell you, well, I've gone to the bank, opened up an account in your name. And in that account, let's say there's five million dollars in there, which is enough probably to take care of the needs of your life. Mm -hmm. Now I just tell you, and I give you the slip that shows you that you have the account there. But then you keep begging me about getting your light bill paid. Mm -hmm. Isn't that what we do with God? Mm -hmm. He gave us an account, put everything in we need, and we still beg him to pay our light bill. Lord. Lord. Now, now you can't do what you don't know. That's just the reality of it. You, get, you don't know you can't do it. But God is saying, I need you 
to believe what I said. Mm -hmm. To take me at my word, and as you take me at my word, then you'll begin to see the manifestation of what I promised you. Mm -hmm. But everything starts with a seed. Mm -hmm. All of us sitting in here started out as a seed. Mm -hmm. But look what we've grown to be. Mm -hmm. And your faith is the same thing. It's the seed of God's word that you plant in your heart and you and you take care of that seed and you, you believe God and you don't waver to the left or to the right but you stay focused on what he said. That's when you're going to start seeing the promises of God in your life. Amen. And there, listen, and there's always an ugly stage. <laughs> oh, yes, sir. Let me tell you about the ugly stage next week. <laughs> no. I'll tell you next week about the ugly stage. Amen. Amen. So come back if you want to know what the ugly stage is about. Amen. All right. So I pray that blesses you and I pray that that, that helps you. And uh, because I'm telling you, God wants you free of worry. He wants you free of anxiety. It'll change your health. It'll change your mind. It'll just, just having the, the assurance that He has you will bless you. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. My son. Yeah. All right, let's pray. Hallelujah. Father, God, we just thank you for the word, Lord. And we just pray that you will continue to help us understand that you are the good shepherd, that you are the El Shaddai, the all-sufficient one who lives and abides on the inside of us. We declare by faith, Father God, that we do have everything that we need. And that, Father God, we thank you for uh, helping us to be patient that after we have done your will, then we can receive the promise, Lord. And so we just thank you, we honor you, we praise you, and we give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.